Hello. How are you all doing today? Well, I hope you are taking time out for yourself because it's important for you to connect with yourself as this is essential for your own healing. So just be gentle with yourself today, okay? In this video, I want to address an issue of forgiveness. Now, I've talked about this before in another video that I made a few years back. It's called The Two-Sided Coin of Forgiveness. It's pretty cool. It's full of insights. And uh, I'd like you to check it out and let me know what you think. But in this video, let's just talk for a moment about forgiveness. I think it's important that we have this conversation as I've noticed a growing trend that for me is a growing concern. And that is people are dismissing the freedom that forgiveness can bring in our healing of trauma. I've seen this a few times on social media. They're basically saying that telling a trauma survivor that they cannot heal because they choose not to forgive their abusers is gaslighting. Forgiveness is not a requirement, it is a personal choice, and healing is possible without it. End quote. Now, I have this to say. It is true, forgiveness is a choice. And in refusing to consider the choice to forgive when it is deeply rooted in their trauma, well, that's still a choice. For one, forgiveness is not what we believe it is. Yes, forgiveness is an absolution of one's wrongdoings, but, but in absolving one of their guilt, who doesn't feel guilty for doing what they be doing, then to whom is forgiveness actually for? Forgiveness is letting go as it is a parting of the ways. It's a part of the process of healing. But forgiveness does not mean that the person who wronged another is free from responsibility or even accountability. No, when you choose to forgive, you are choosing to no longer stand in the gap with the abuser by carrying the torch, by carrying that burden of guilt and shame, regret, anger, resentment, all these negative feelings that should go to the abuser. Forgiveness is that spiritual cleansing that we desperately need. Forgiveness does not come as a verbal declaration, I forgive you. I know I've done this, I've tried. And when I said this to God in prayer about the betrayer that I was holding in my heart, like in such shock and awe, God showed me this vision. I saw a people in a group who were all standing around in a circle holding hands. And where I was standing, the space beside me was empty. And I knew who that space was for, the person who betrayed me, as we were all friends in heaven. And God said to me, either they come here or they go somewhere else. I buckled. I fell to my knees in sorrow and suddenly my pain of what the abuser projected onto me didn't matter because what was so most important in my mind was this person's soul. My friend was still my friend as they were still a soul sister. It didn't matter to me the betrayal. What mattered to me was I loved them because I loved their soul. And I did speak forgiveness. I did say to God, I forgive this person. But forgiveness doesn't happen in a moment that we speak it. Oh, forgiveness takes time as we have to work that forgiveness out in our own hearts as we learn to work out those hurt feelings. So in working out my pain and trauma of being traumatized, I have realized this about forgiveness. No matter what happens to you, no matter the harm done to you, only God himself has the authority to condemn and judge. Only he sees the motive of someone's heart. People do not know why they are bound in emotional torment, and they are blinded to their actions in their pain. Trauma has our comings and goings set on autopilot that we can't see the harm that we're doing to others and the harm that we're doing to ourselves out of reacting in that emotional pain. 
So just think about that for a moment. Because it is our emotional pain that compulses us to go out and do and say as we become triggered. We who are traumatized are the most vulnerable to repeat patterns of abuse. Maybe not the same patterns of abuse, but we are vulnerable to those kinds of actions and reactions as we are vulnerable to the same kinds of feelings that our abuser has. And because we share in those same kind of feelings, we can relate to our abusers. Don't hate me for that. Healing from trauma takes effort. And I too am speaking from experience. I personally wanted to understand my abusers so that I could begin searching for answers to help me understand myself. Trauma victims assume that they are innocent of wrongdoing and we are at the time of when trauma happens. But because we allow trauma to happen on ourselves, we are repeating the cycle of abuse. We are abusing ourselves and that we are not innocent of. We may not be committing the same acts, but yet we are. When we think about the abuse, doesn't Jesus say, if you think about adultery with somebody, it is as if you've committed it? Well, we think about the trauma committed against us. And so we are re-traumatizing ourselves and committing those same acts upon us. Again, we're repeating the cycle of abuse. And forgiveness is the only way to healing. We've got to forgive ourselves of that. And if we can forgive ourselves, we can forgive the people who victimized us. And if we forgive the people who have victimized us, then we can forgive ourselves as forgiveness is an exercise in self-love.